All right, so we're going to finish up with 1.2 today, and we're going to handle that. We're dealing with our identify use of break properties for multiplication and division of real numbers. Okay, so we're going to do that today. So we'll start out with this. Let's talk about what we're talking about here. Multiplication of real numbers. The product of two real numbers with the same sign is positive. So what that is stating is if you have two positives or two negatives, if you multiply them together, they're going to be positive. So for number one here, we're just talking about is saying you have positive times positive, we're going to get a positive number. Same thing if you were to say you have a negative value times a negative value, you'll get a positive number. Okay? For number two there, the product of two real numbers with different signs is negative. So for number two there, erase that. Color here. So for number two, if you have positive times a negative, you're going to get a negative answer. And it doesn't matter the order in which case you're in. This could also be a negative value times a positive value, in which case you will still get a negative value. All right, so number three, what do we got? The product of any real number and zero is zero. So again, with three, I'm pretty sure you guys have been experiencing this and have seen this. Any number, whether it's a positive number times zero, equal zero or if you have some crazy negative number or whatever number it could be be simple it could be wild it is zero if you multiply any number times zero it will give you zero okay well, let's do a couple problems and see what we got so for a right off the bat we see that we have a positive number two multiplied times a negative 5.1 well, if we think about that, I believe it was our second rule that we just said, a positive and a negative, so two opposite signs, we will get a negative answer. So first off, we know the answer automatically is going to be negative. Let's go ahead and multiply this out. Again, you don't need a calculator. You simply do this. You can rearrange these numbers and multiply them out. You don't got to make it all crazy. All right, so two times one is two, and two times five is 10. Put the decimal over one spot, oh, 10.2. So we should have a negative 10.2, our answer. And we know it's negative because there is a negative 5.1. Okay, so for B, for negative two thirds times a positive nine over eight. Right off the bat, we know we have a positive, sorry, a positive nine eight and a negative two thirds. We are going to get a negative answer. Now with this, you simply multiply across. So you're simply taking two thirds times nine eighths you're multiplying across. So we should get 2 times 9 should give you 18. And 3 times 8 should give you 24. Now the only thing else we can think about here is can we reduce this fraction a little bit? Well, I believe the number 2 would go into both of these. So if we divide both of these by the number 2, 18 divided by 2, Beep. 
So if we do that, we should get a 9 on top and a 12 on bottom. It looks like we can still go a little bit further. Because isn't 3 going to go into 9 and 3 go into 12? So let's divide by a 3. In which case we should get a 3 on top and a 4 on bottom. It's 12 divided by 3 is 4 and 9 divided by 3 is 3. However though, don't forget that's not your complete answer because you still had this negative value here. So it is a negative 3 over 4. Okay, for this last one, we've got mixed fractions here. We need to make them improper fractions to get this done. So if you don't remember, we simply need to multiply the denominator times the whole number and add the numerator. So we have 3 times 3, which is 9. Hang on, let's back up. Before we do that, before we work out the problem, what is our first rule here? What we got? We have the same sign, right? A negative 3 and 1 thirds and a negative 3 over 10. So overall, we know we should get a positive answer because even though they're both, even though they're negative, they're both negative. So therefore, negative times a negative is a positive. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put this in a proper fraction. So 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. So we should get a 10 or 3. You don't need to do anything with that one. That's 3 over 10. Well, you can simply multiply this out or you can cancel them out however you want to because the 10s we cancel each other out and the 3s we cancel each other out just leaving you with a 1. But if you'd like to see that, again, let's do it. So 3 times 10 will give you 30 over 3 times 10 which gives you 30. And any number over itself is 1. So 30 over 30 is 1. So we should get a positive 1 for the answer there. Okay? Alright, so now you got three problems I believe to do for yourself. Alright guys, now that you're back from those three problems, let's look at this next part. So division of real numbers. So we need to assume that A and B are real numbers such that B, our denominator, does not equal zero. So if A and B have the same signs and the quotient A over B is positive, I mean then the quotient A over B is positive. So just like multiplication, the same signs can become positive. So with number one, we have positive A over B. So now we're going to write this better. Positive over positive, we will get a positive answer. If we have a negative over a negative, we will get a positive answer. Okay, so for number two, if A and B have different signs, then the quotient A over B is negative. So again, number two, A over B, but if we have positive over a negative, that still gives us a negative value. If we have a negative divided by a positive, doesn't matter the order, negative over positive or positive over negative, the negative is still there, so we're going to get a negative answer. For number three, zero divided by any number is still going to be zero. That's just a rule you need to understand. Same thing with number four b, a number divided by 0, is undefined. 
So, any number divided by a zero is undefined. Does not exist, all right? Not gonna work for us. So let's do some problems. For our first one here, negative 42 over seven. Well, with that, hopefully you can kind of see something really quick and easy. That should actually work out then for itself as far as negative 42 out of a seven. We should see that seven goes into 42. But the first thing is, what's the answer going to be? Positive or negative, just by looking at it. Well, since we have a negative up top and a positive below, we are getting an overall negative value. Because the signs are different. And hopefully you remember that if you take 42 divided by 7, you should get 6. 6 times 7 is 42, which gives us 0. So we have 6 is our answer. So we have a negative 6 is our answer because you cannot forget this negative up here. Okay, so this next one. We got negative 96 over negative 144. Well, first off, both are negative. So if both are negative, what should we get? We should get a positive. Positive answer overall. So now, 144 doesn't go into 96. However, though, this can be reduced. Now, if you have a calculator, I understand you can just put that in there and do the calculator and take care of it. Uh, if you don't, if you just left this as positive 96 or 144, it's a good first step, but it still needs to be reduced. So let's go ahead and reduce it then. Well, since there's even numbers on the end here, a 6 and a 4, we know 2 can go into both of those, okay? So let's see what we got here. So 2 goes into 96, what do we get? We get, we'll just take 96, we'll just do this. No reason to do anything crazy. If we don't know, just do it. 2 times 4 gives me 8. 1, bring down the 6, so 2 times 8 will give me 16. Okay, so we know we got 48, and we can also divide 144 by 2. Well, 2 times 7 will give us 14. And then 2 times 2 will give me 4. So 72. Well, we've still got even numbers back there, so we can definitely keep dividing if we want to. And you can keep going all the way and keep doing that. Unless you see a bigger number, of course, you could divide in uh, 6. Or let's see, we take maybe 8. Anyway, when you go down there, you keep doing it, and you should come out to get two-thirds. We'll reduce to two-thirds. Again, that is a positive two-thirds. So the next one we got now is negative 5 over 7. Well, this one's really easy because it's already reduced all the way. And just like part B, we had two negatives. So you had part B, and then we knew it gave us a positive. So the answer for C is simply a positive 5 over 7. Okay, so now we have got this wonderful equation here of a mixed fraction and divided by a negative fraction. So right off the bat, we know if a positive divided by a negative, well, we know we're going to have 
a negative value. Let's see, what color do I want to use? We get a negative value. Now we need to make this mixed fraction into improper. So 10 times 3 is 30 plus 1. So we got 31 over 10 divided by 2 fifths. Well, if you haven't seen this before, I'm going to show you. So if you take 31 divided by 10, and let's say you want to make it a fraction, just like the division, right? And then you divide it by 2 over 5. If you have a fraction on the denominator, you can flip the denominator and multiply it times the numerator. So with this, this is simply saying you can say 31 over 10 and multiply it times 5 over 2. Now, don't let these crazy numbers scare you. Again, we can reduce this a little bit before we do any multiplication, make it really simple. Because this 5 can go into this 10, okay? This 2 can't go into 31, because 31 is odd, but if we make this 5 go into this 10, it makes it a lot easier. So if we were to take this and simply say, okay, I got 5, there's a 1, this 5 divided by 5 is 1, and 10 divided by 5 is 2, we should be able to get this no problem. So now, all we're simply doing is taking 31 times 1 and 2 times 2. If we do that, we should get 31 divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. However, that's not the answer. Remember, we have that negative still. So it is 31 over 4, but it's a negative. So negative 31 over 4. All right, guys, and I believe you got four problems to work on, and you should be able to take care of it. Have a good one.